just heading down to the beach for a little walk this evening. It is very, very warm. <laughs> um, it's almost nine o'clock now, I think, about there. We've got Teddy Bear, who is very excited to be coming down here. So, so beautiful tonight. And Bear is pulling me. <laughs> is it being a cheekies? He wants to go for a swim. <laughs> it's so pretty. Sounds like there's a lot of people down here too. Bear is making this really difficult to keep straight. Ah, oh, gorgeous. Don't do it! <laughs> Ruining my vlog, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> um. Ironically, when I was doing a live on Instagram, Elisha yelled boogers as well. <laughs> what is with that? Almost like Yeah. What's up, you guys? Um, so I've had a bit of an afternoon. Um, we have found um, August's mum. Um, so this is um, the little kitten, her mum. It's a whole big story. I shared it on Instagram, um, but essentially they got separated. The council picked up the mum and not the kittens. So we've eventually tracked down the mum after like several weeks of my mum and my sister, everyone calling around trying to find her because this other woman who's like, no worries, we'll let you know where she is, went off on holidays. Anyway, so we tracked her down. We picked her up on Saturday. It is now Monday, um, but she's really unwell. Um, she's really not doing good at all. So they didn't tell us that she was sick um, until we went and picked her up. And they're like, oh, by the way, she's got cat flu. You'll need to keep her separate from your other cats. Okay, that's fine. But she, she hasn't been eating um, and she hasn't been drinking either. So I rang up today and they're like, yep, bring her in. So I just got back from that. Um, and it's really not good news. Um, there's not much we can do for her, or not much they can do for her. Um, all we can do, they've given me um, antibiotics and a decongestant for her. So the whole thing is her nose is blocked and cats don't eat when they have a blocked nose. So she's given me a couple of little tips and things, but she said basically the big thing is just to keep her comfortable. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry <laughs> um so we obviously we lost her other kitten a few weeks ago oh it just fucking sucks um anyway so we're we're doing our best for her right now um and um sorry i'm a really big crier you guys have never seen me cry though so <laughs> we are um yeah so we're just keeping her comfortable um and we're gonna keep giving her, her all her meds so she's got to have like four different things a day it's just ridiculous um and just sort of um force feed her water with a little you know syringe um and i just hope that she gets better so i'm really hoping <laughs> by the time that i upload this um i don't know i can have some really good news and and sort of show her but she's she's so beautiful she's so sweet um she loves pats and everything but because we've had to give her so much medication um because she's feeling really shitty she um just kind of isn't that interested in pats and stuff right now like she just you know we pick her up and have to give her her stuff you know and on saturday and even a little bit on sunday she was staying around for pats and cuddles but now she's just like in her hiding place you know so she's in the lounge um on her own so she doesn't give the cat flu to the other cats or the dog because apparently they can pass it to dogs as well um yeah so it's just the whole thing <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> this is a vlog. This is my life, all right? This is behind the scenes. <laughs> um, I've got a ton of work to do now. It's like 4.30 or something, but I couldn't concentrate before going to the vet. So I've just got this um, big thing I've got to get done. So I'm going to go and do that and then go and feed all the kitties and the dog. <laughs> and um, yes.
kittens, am I right? What you got there? Oh, there's something else that spins. She's been eating my uh, frog mouth feather, that one right there at the back. So I've given up my rosemary, but I don't think she likes it that much. You want a rosemary? Anyway, she's distracting me from doing my work right now. <laughs> I have one baby. And we got the other baby. And then we got one more baby. She's trying to eat my breakfast right now. Stop it. Excuse me. Excuse me. It's not for you. Excuse me. It's not for you. She doesn't understand the concept that, like, you know, food belongs to someone else. But if I want it, then it's mine, isn't it? All the animals. He's so cute. It's my OG baby. Isn't it? Cutie face. What's up, you guys? We're in my kitchen today. Um, I just needed to make some more orange slices um, because I'm making some spell garlands at the moment. So, you know, little strings with things hanging off them. Um, and I'm using quite a bit of oranges. Um, these are the last of my dry oranges though, and they're all kind of like, none of them look particularly very nice. So I'm just going to be using all of these. Um, you know, I use them in all kinds of different spells and stuff like that, um, but not these for garlands. They're not... They're not quite aesthetically pleasing enough. So I just wanted to show you what I do because I know that, I don't know, it's not that difficult, but some people are like, you know, I've never done it before. Oh, what do you do? All right, so I've got a couple of oranges here. These are old oranges, you guys. I would recommend using nice, fresh oranges um, just because the skin's going to look nicer. It's probably going to dry better. These are all a bit mangled, but it's what I've got. And uh, my husband is away this weekend, so I don't have a car. So we're using what we have. Um, plus, you know, anything that doesn't turn out that nice, you know, we'll just go in the everything else pile anyway. But hopefully we'll get a few nice garland pieces, at least from the center of the oranges. They're always going to be your best pieces for display purposes. So I have knife, a board, and orange. Pretty easy. Now um, I'm just going to slice them up. Um, you can kind of do it as thin or as thick as you'd like. Um, it's really up to you. They're going to dry a bit nicer if they're kind of I would say medium ish if they're too small they sometimes it depends on how high you have them um, in your dehydrator or oven but they can get a bit kind of crinkly or whatever too thick and they'll just dry funny now you don't have to use a dehydrator or an oven if you don't want to slash don't have one um, you can actually air dry them although you're going to need fairly dry weather so if you've got quite humid or wet weather um, you're probably going to get molding and if you are drying them out I would recommend slicing them as thinly as possible okay so oranges are amazing so I'm gonna try even though I just said I'm gonna try a bit thinner because I want a few more I really want quite a few slices um, I predominantly use oranges for like their sunshine energy right like they look like the Sun so beautiful um, so for success largely um, however oranges can also be used in love magic um, so for drawing and attracting love um, and for enhancing a relationship that you already have you know for getting a commitment from someone like to go to the next level or whatever to get um, someone to encourage someone I should say to marry you things like this um, they're also used for divination that's more their seeds so um, you know, if you ask a question while you hold an orange in your hand um, and then, you know, cut open the orange and count how many seeds there are. Now, for this kind of variety, like, they're not seeded. Like, so a lot of the ones you buy from the store don't have seeds in them, right? So divination fail. <laughs> um, but if you get some oranges that are, what would the word be, like heirloom or, um, you know, things like that when they haven't been, you know, monosantoed or whatever the fuck, um, you, you can use those for divination. They're also really good for just any kind of prosperity working. Um, so for 
you know, bringing in money for getting a new job or for having success in your current job, getting a promotion, anything like this. Um, anything to do with finances and increasing those because this is sunshine energy right so it's all about abundance prosperity all that kind of thing so we're nearly done here you guys i bought my husband these new knives for christmas oh my god they're amazing we've had these shitty fucking kitchen knives for so many years <laughs> and um I'm trying to be a little bit more like I'm a bit more finicky today, but like seriously, I the first time I used one was actually to cut an orange and I just went boom, slice straight through it. I was like, oh my god, like having nice knives is just a very luxurious feeling. I'm all about this life. Okay, so we've got all our orange slices. I'm going to be drying these bits as well because again, these are great. I'll use the um the rind and you know all that is so fabulous. So I have move this to the side. I shouldn't need more than three, but I've got dehydrator, um, I don't know what, shelves here. <laughs> um, and I just keep, um, these look old and manky, but I haven't been eating off these. So these are um, just baking paper that I've cut myself and I dry stuff on there. So all I'm gonna do is put these on. Now, as you're cutting your oranges, you can keep your mind on your intent. So if you were going to use them for one specific purpose, um, that would be a really wonderful idea. So as you're doing it, you know, any kind of, um, any action you're taking when you're actually uh, doing something that's going to be for a spell, like if you keep your mind or in your intention, you're just going to build that power all the more. I'm actually only going to need two little shelves, which is grand. So I'm just packing them all in here. That Everything in the dehydrator will shrink. So you don't need a whole lot of space. Um, now, if you're using an oven to do this, you want to turn the oven down really low. I don't have an exact temperature for you guys. I haven't used an oven for this before. You can look it up easily. Um, but you want to turn the oven down really low. And some people say to leave the oven door open as well. That's more for raw food stuff, though. Like if you're making sure you don't want to... Um, I actually have heaps of space in here, so I may as well just stretch these out a bit. Um, yeah, if you're not wanting to get above a certain temperature. Um, but make sure you keep an eye on them if you are putting them in the oven because they can easily burn. With a dehydrator, they're not going to get hot enough. So you can just, you know, leave them um, and that's all good. All right, so I only need two for today. I'm just wondering now that I'm doing this, if there's anything else I want to dry. I don't really have anything right now. <laughs> all right, that'll be fine. I'll just do oranges today. All right, so I'm just gonna stack these up and put them in my dehydrator. And I just put it up to the top temperature. And how long does it normally take? I think these will take quite a while. Actually, you know what I normally do? And I forgot because I was talking, which is really annoying. Um, I might just do it now because otherwise, yeah, it's gonna be a pain in the ass. Um, I actually dry them off a little bit with tea towels. So I will show you that first. I am running out of tea towel as well. Tea towel, like paper towel, you know, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, this just helps them dry off a little bit because there's so much moisture, especially if they're super ripe like these ones. They're just filled with this. This, definitely do this step if you are air drying, okay? Um, it's just going to help you so much to get a bunch of that liquid out. So just gently kind of press and then we're ready to go. Um, now, if you're air drying, make sure that you flip these over each day. So it'll probably take a couple of days. Uh, the last time I air dried oranges was many years ago. But yeah, I've had them a lot more thin and just every single day flip them to make sure they don't go moldy. Um, and when you are using an oven or a dehydrator, make sure you turn them over regularly as well. Because what they'll do is as they dry, they're going to kind of um, bend, like they'll kind of bend up a little bit um, as they're drying so if you actually flip them over it'll just keep them a bit more straight that's if you care like care about the aesthetic of them it doesn't really matter um, in terms of obviously their magical potency or anything like that okay that is all my oranges paper towels <laughs> so I'm gonna put them in the dehydrator now um, I will set this, it's 40 degrees Celsius, oh no, it goes up to 70, 
apparently I know my dehydrator really well. 40 degrees, sorry, is if you want to keep it raw food. Um, so I used to actually be a high raw vegan. <laughs> um, and so everything's that under 40. Yeah, I'm going to put that right up to 70, um, which is what I normally do, but I don't normally look at the temperature because I don't really mind because not raw food, right? Um, and these are going to be, it's like, what time is it now? It's just after two o'clock in the afternoon. So these are definitely not going to be ready until tomorrow. So I'm going to leave them on and then overnight. Um, so before I go to bed, I'll flip them um, and leave them on all night. And they should be ready to go. Gosh, I'm really not sure. Probably maybe midday-ish tomorrow or something like that. Uh, might be less actually since it's on 70. But anyway, we'll see. So you just check them and see. You want to make sure all the moisture is gone from them before you put them away. So if you're putting them in a jar or something like that, make sure they are absolutely dry however you're drying them. Otherwise, they will go moldy. I have some incredible news. This is Ravina. I named her after... I don't know what her name is, the Wicked Witch in, um, you gonna go to the toilet now, really? I'm trying to film you. Dude. Okay, we're back. So I named her after the Wicked Witch or the Evil Queen, or I don't know what her name is, in Snow White, um, the one that Charlize Theron plays. I really wanted to give her a witch name and, um, yeah, I can't remember if I've talked about any of this. This vlog is gonna be such a mess. Anyway. The last you saw of me, I was super, super worried about her because she wasn't eating and the vet was like, look, it's not looking good. Oh, she's like, <laughs> so hard to film probably. Look how cute she is. Um, and then just somehow the next morning, by some miracle, she started eating and she has had, oh, excuse me, you guys, she's like, just circling me like a shark right now. <laughs> um, and I am not fit to be on camera. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, so she, she just started eating um, and she's had a really healthy appetite ever since. So we've been able to hide most of her medication in the food. So she just, she was circling me in front before and I was like, this is a perfect time to film her. And now she's playing hard to get. She doesn't want to be on camera. Um, there we go. Oh, good. She's eating the rest of her food. That food's got some medicine in it. So, um, yeah, so we've been able to hide her medicine because we had to give her medication three times a day. But she's she's eating and she's drinking and she's going to be just fine. So I was working magic on her and my family was also praying for her. So my family are Christian. Um, and by the way, I absolutely believe in the power of prayer. Um, there's a lot of witches who like leave Christianity behind and then like all of a sudden for some reason think that all of that stuff doesn't work anymore. So bizarre to me. Um, I know the power of prayer. So they were on it um, and, and they're big animal lovers as well. And like they already knew her as well. Like my sister had been looking after her and it was like this whole thing. So yeah, like between us all, <laughs> we just did the, uh, somehow um, after two days of not eating a anything and not drinking anything, she came back and she's like, yep, here I am. And she's doing really, really well. So she's still sick. Um, so unfortunately she's in cat quarantine, um, which just sucks. But so she hasn't met August yet, her kitten. Uh, because she's got the cat flu, which is like apparently insanely contagious. And the vet said she seems to have a particularly nasty strain of it as well. Um, but over the last few days since she's been eating, she's gotten heaps better. Um, so she's not like sneezing as much as she was and not as, you know, phlegmy and disgusting. So that's awesome. Um, so hopefully she's got like another week left of antibiotics. And after that, she should be all good. And I will totally get like the first meeting because I feel like I think it's going to be super cute. I hope so. I hope they recognize each other because it's been, oh, gosh, it's been five weeks, I think, since they've seen each other now. So they might not, but they're both really lovely cats. So they're going to love each other either way. But it'll be interesting to see. Like, I'm not sure how it's going to go. Look how cute she is. Look at the face. Hi, all. I'm at my altar this morning. Um, it's already like 10.30. <laughs> Normally I'm here a bit earlier, but um, it's been a hell of a morning. I've been looking after plants and animals. Um, the house is kind of 
gone to shit this past week, so I tidied up a bunch this morning as well. And now I'm here to just chill, to gather a little bit of strength, um, just to have some connection time um, before I really start my day and I've got to get into work. This is one of the, um, the benefits and also the challenges of working from home is, you know, all the things are around and need to be done, you know. So most days I'm pretty good and just kind of ignore everything and do it little bits and pieces throughout the day. But today I just needed that freshness. I just needed a fresh start. So I am here at my altar and I'm just going to um, pull a card for the day and do a little bit of bibliomancy. Um, that was my card for yesterday. So I've got the Angels and Ancestors Oracle here and the Everyday Witch Oracle there. Um, so I like oracles for my daily draws um, and then I do tarot for the week and, you know, tarot anytime I do a reading for myself as well. Yeah, so I'm already feeling a little bit much better actually, so much better, oh my god, after Ravina ate this morning, I was just fucking overjoyed. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I ended up cleaning for the next hour and a half, so I'm tired now. <laughs> um, and I've got a big work day ahead of me, so I am going to um, connect in now and chill for a bit before the work day begins. Um, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this vlog. It's been super random. I don't know how long it's going to go for. I don't know if it's going to work out. It's super random, but I might try and be a little bit more purposeful about the next one. Um, you know, I'll kind of show you a little bit more a day in the life and kind of a typical kind of day in my life, I suppose. Although at the moment, pff, there is no typical. <laughs> there is no typical. Actually, very quickly before I go, I wanted to show you guys this beautiful garland. Look at this. I made this um, on my weekend. I wanted to show you the making of actually. It just didn't kind of happen. I had a lot going on. It took me all day. Um, and I was watching American Horror Story Coven for the second time um, while I was doing this. So I'm like six episodes in, eight to go. It's such a good show, you guys. I'm super not into horror at all. I fucking hate horror, in fact. Um, but I had heard from people that it was such a good show. I was like, all right, I'm going to give it a go. It is a bit gory. There are bits that really aren't my favourite. <laughs> But it's just such a good show, like, and the music is incredible and, like, it's set in New Orleans and it's just amazing. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. Thanks for sticking with me if you're here um, listening to me say goodbye right now. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Wishing you tons of love and many, many blessings. Yeah.